right. So we're going to start. Uh, uh, good afternoon and welcome to Realty Coffee Talk. This is Global Connectivity Conference for CIPS only. If you are not a CIPS, please do not join our meeting. Only invitation is sent to CIPS only. So my name is Tahir Aikureshi. Uh, I am the host uh, of Realty Coffee Talk and uh, this global connectivity, the power of connectivity. So we're going to begin our conversation, get to know each other, just to everybody uh, who has joined in the past or now we have new members joining. So very important for us that each one of you introduce yourself. So more people are joining. I'll continue to focus on that before I do my presentation. So we're going to begin with Kathy. If I miss anyone, please tell. So, Kathy, one minute about you, brokerage, location, and what you do. One minute for each one of you. Introduce yourself to our uh, committee. Okay. Thank you so much for um, allowing me to be here. My name is Kathy Jesse. I'm a broker owner of uh, Remax Franchises in uh, Southern California. We recently um, combined our offices with uh, two other offices in Southern California. So we're focusing solely on sales now, which I love. Um, we have a team of eight and we um, focus primarily on the Southern California area. I've been doing this for 30 years um, and uh, CIPS is one of my 10 professional designations. Thank you very, very, very much and welcome joining our conference. Uh, Tanya, you're next. Yes. Hi, my name is Tanya, and I am located in Santa Clarita, California. I'm with Century 21 Everest. I'm an agent. I'm not a broker yet. But um, one of the interesting things that I really was deep into joining as a CIPS was because I speak several languages, and that would help me to connect with other um, clients um, all over the world if there's a need of translation. So that's my goal and my target. And I'm hoping to connect with other agents and brokers in different areas that I can help them where they're smooth um, speaking if there's any need of translation. My area is um, very uh, nicely hot right now as far as a lot of people are joining to come uh, and buy homes. We have a lot of builders that are doing brand new homes. So the prices are great. Looking forward to everybody's meeting and connection. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, Bellini, please. Hi. Hi, I'm Bellini Dickerson. I am in Cary, North Carolina. Um, I um, am with Coa Banker Advantage. Um, my focus is mainly residential. This is my first time joining. Um, I found out on Facebook. I uh, wasn't, I didn't know about it. Um, I'm looking forward to connecting with everyone and um, happy to be here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Frank? Yes, good afternoon. I'm Frank McManus. I am a real estate consultant located here in the Central Florida East Coast area, so specifically Ormond Beach, which is just above Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, I work for, my broker is Greater Orlando Realty USA, Inc. And we serve, my team serves the Eastern Volusia County area. And I've had my CIPS designation since 2019. And I enjoy working with um, uh, a lot of Canadian owners, buyers, and investors here in this area. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Frank. Uh, I'm continuing to admit uh, people, uh, our friends who are joining us. So, uh, Rory. Hey, well, good afternoon. My name is Rory Dubin. I'm in the Jacksonville and Northeast Florida area. I'm a broker manager for um, Exit Real Estate Gallery. We have seven offices in the six counties in Northeast Florida, about 450 agents. I do both commercial and residential. I've had my CIPS since 2006 and passed the Global Business Council Fair for Northeast Florida Association of Realtors. And currently I am the vice chair of REBI's Global Alliances Committee at the national level and on NAR's CIPS advisory board. Wonderful, Vel welcome. Uh, Sarah? Hi, 
My name is Sara Busier, and I am here in North uh, County, San Diego, California. It's the first time uh, enjoying that meeting, and uh, I'm very happy to learn some new things about uh, the presenters today. Thank you very much, Sarah. I think you're the first time joining this time. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, Ellie. Please, I'm going to make sure yes. everybody uh, yes, on the screen that. as they're showing up. I'm just connecting it. If I miss anyone, please make sure yeah. you introduce yourself. Sally? Right. It, my name is Ali Dubina, and I'm the first time joining this organization. I just recently, last month, got my designation of CIPS. I work in downtown Toronto for Royal Patriot Community. And uh, so my objective is to meet with as many people as possible and maybe go by referral. We have lots of people coming into the GTA Toronto. So I hope uh, that uh, I can help and advise for people that uh, need information about uh, how the real estate works in Ontario, Canada. Thank you very much, uh, Ali. I'm from Mississauga. So Oh, okay. All right. Sounds Toronto good. Toronto, Mississauga is our area. Maybe That's we good. can connect that. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Bruce, please. Hello, everybody. I'm Bruce Abramson with KW Commercial. I've been in, um, actually been in real estate for about 30 years. Most of that was in residential. The last couple of years changed over to the commercial side out of the Sarasota Lakewood Ranch, Florida area but I also have an office in, that's in the Detroit metro area. So I, I think I've been in uh, CIPS for five years now. I've lost track of that. Uh, and I'm specializing in the multifamily space. So if I can help anybody, or it's great to kind of have an opportunity to, to network with everybody. Uh, again, Bruce Abramson with KW Commercial. Look forward to meeting everybody. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, please, it's very important that you put uh, your uh, name and also location because one is video recorded. And if we need to connect back and forth, just in case we forget, we can recognize that. Uh, it's very important to put the location. So I'm going to put Shapar. Uh, your mic, you need to open, uh, unmute your mic. We, Shapar, we can't hear you. Is anybody else can hear her? We cannot hear you. You need to check uh, check your uh, sound system. Then we'll get back to you. Maybe she can unmute herself. Uh, I am unmute. Okay. Can you... Now, now we can hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, this, I'm, I'm Shapar Ostabar. I'm with Corporate Global Living in San Diego, California. And um, I, I don't know how many years ago I got my CIPS uh, certification. Um, I really don't remember. Uh, anyways, it's nice meeting all of you. We, I would love to have referrals. If anybody is coming to San Diego, then anywhere in San Diego. And actually, I have been working also in Orange County because I do have clients that they are North San Diego, North County. So nice meeting all of you and looking forward to the continuation of the meeting. You're welcome. Uh, Anna? Yes, hi everyone. My name is Anna. I was born in Poland. Uh, I live now in Florida. I am with Remax Advanced Realty in Miami, but I also serve uh, Broward and Palm Beach area. Can't wait to meet all of you guys in person one day, hopefully. Yeah, I'm certain. a CIPS for two years now. Wonderful. You are a senior to me. I, I became CIPS when I was 67 years old uh, last, last year. So okay. it's a lot of fun and uh, we enjoy everybody. So make sure. Okay, Alki. Uh, hello, my name is Alka Mariotti and I am from Long Island in New York. I work primarily with residential properties. And I've been a CIPS now for, I don't know, somewhere around six or seven years uh, and uh, enjoying the um, company of other CIPSs. Thank you very much. Uh, you, your team, uh, video is not on. So, uh, Yoshi, I know you are a busy guy. Uh, it's your turn now. 
Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yoshi from New York City. Um, I practice re residential real estate in Queens, Long Island, um, uh, you know, suburban area. And I'm in business. Uh, CIPS for about 10 years and um, uh, this year I'm appointed to be a CIPS advisory board vice chair for NAR. Thank you. Fantastic. He's a great asset to CIP family. Uh, Dorothy? Hi, my name is Dorothy Bart, so I'm calling. I'm from New York. Um, I'm, I've been a CIPS for a few years now. I'm from Ghana, West Africa, and I do mostly residential real estate. I am also on the NAR Fair Housing Policy Committee, so I'm very involved, and I have 10, 12 designations in addition to the CIPS. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So I'm going to see, uh, did Pur Purvi, you, you spoke? Because the screens are moving as people are moving. No, I didn't, but uh, we said hello to each other. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Purvi. I'm with Urban Home. Uh, I'm actually a broker co-owner with Urban Home New Jersey. Um, I pretty much serve um, um, New Jersey Gold Coast by uh, the river. So yeah, and I've been a CIPS since 2019. Um, and it's great to see everybody out here. Fantastic. So uh, Crystal? Good morning. Oh, no, good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Crystal Silver. I'm a CIPS forever and ever. And I'm also a CIPS instructor. I'm in Delray Beach, South Florida, and I serve Palm Beach County and Broward County. And I'm also on the CIPS uh, advisory committee for NAR. Anything South Florida? I don't go to Miami, but Broward County and South Palm Beach County, I'm happy to take your referrals. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for joining. Uh, Rogers, it's your turn. Have you spoken? If not, please. Thank you very much. Uh, glad to join the group again. And my name is Roger Menkoff. I'm in the Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands. No passport needed if you're a U.S. citizen or have a green card. Uh, passport needed if you're not. Uh, I'm one of the OG, original gangsters uh, from the second class of CIPS, and I was an instructor for NAR for the CIPS course. I do uh, all types of real estate here in the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, St. Croix, St. John, St. Thomas, and Water Island, and some of the out islands, uh, everything from... $55,000 lots to uh, $25 million uh, development properties. So I'm here to help and have a sphere of influence and referral base uh, can help folks with that as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Rogers. Uh, Denise? Good morning. I'm Denise Netto. I'm from the Portland, Oregon and um, Vancouver, Washington area. Everyone confuses Vancouver, Washington with Vancouver, BC, uh, but we are Vancouver, Washington state. So just right across the Columbia River from Portland, Oregon. And I serve both sides of the river, both Oregon and um, Southwest Washington. I'm the um, president of my local association this year and uh, also serve on the state of Washington um, board of Directors, and I'm involved a lot with um, professional standards. I have a client that I met several years ago that um, lives in Turkey, and she's a dual citizen, and we have um, been working together to um, help people buy second homes in Turkey, and um, I'm open to help anybody you know that uh, may be interested in uh, checking out that country after this pandemic, of course, gets more under control, um, but if you need anybody in Portland or Vancouver, I'm here for, for it to serve you. Wonderful and welcome, Denise. Uh, congratulations being president of local real estate association. Uh, Andre? Jordan, um, which is a little town just outside of Minneapolis, but I spent 23 years on Hillhead Island. Uh, working in the uh, oceanfront, ocean-oriented homes before I fell in love and moved here because my wife's from Minneapolis. Um, 
and the CFIPS in uh, 2019. And uh, I'm looking forward to connecting with a lot more people here and uh, hopefully working with international buyers coming to the Luxury Lakes areas around Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul. Uh, thank you. Okay, I think I'm going to go to the listing because there are some uh, fr uh, friends who have not activated their video so i just don't want to miss out okay jamie jamie uh, jamie are you just join it please You're yes hi good morning everyone jaime flasterstein um uh, been a cips for probably 12 years uh work a lot with clients from south america and israel and uh, good to see some of you that i know and Good to see everybody else. Nice meeting you. Wonderful. Isabel, Bella? Oh, oh, I'll mute your... Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Yes, my name is Isabella White. Uh, I'm here in Naples, Florida. I'm originally from Poland and live many years in Spain. I work uh, a lot with Canadian customers because of uh, Naples is one of the top destination for them, I guess. And um, I'm happy to help with anything here. Wonderful. The, see, the CIPs uh, is a uh, designee are the powerhouse in the, we have so much connectivities. We have so much experience and knowledge and we are sharing our knowledge and experience to convert this power into a business opportunity for all of us. We can refer business to each other. If we are, because of jurisdiction, we cannot do business in every part of the world. We are licensed certain jurisdiction. So the best choice is to make a small piece of the pie, share something and refer to each other and make money. And this is the whole part of this, the power of connectivity that I created that I want to connect with all of you. I make refer to you, you make refer to me, and we all share whatever harness earning that we can make. So this is why it's very important that we should connect. And I do a small presentation like I do, but I'm waiting for the lawyer to join us at 1.30. After that, I'll do the presentation. And then I give you what steps that we have to take to achieve success in doing business. First, we are getting to know each other. We are already a big uh, relationship. I am already connected with several uh, CIPS that I am reaching toward now referring because we learn about the product, projects they have, how I can promote them, how they can promote my project and how we can work it out. So I'm going to share some information with you, how we should do it. And each one of you should do that. For that particular reason, I have done two things. I have created a, a global connectivity network on Facebook where only those people who are interested to do business with me, they can join it. CIPS, you don't need any approval. You can post anything you want. Idea is that sending email of listing or detail the project, video is heavy. If you load on that network, your project or the listing that you want to connect is easy. It's called Global Connectivity Network on Facebook. Therefore, you don't need to email me. Now, if you need to connect with me, for example, I created a WhatsApp global, CIPS global connectivity. That means instead of me doing a Zoom with you, I just pick up the call number, my cell number, click say, I want a video call or I want to have, I need this information for this buyer or this and that. We can connect that because Zoom is a formal way of connecting, sending invitation, email. But WhatsApp is very fast. so. I will share with you on my presentation where to connect. An idea is to connect more and, uh, and, and do more business. So now I'm going to see Bernadette, it's your turn. Open your mic, please. Hi, everybody. Yes, my name is Bernadette Demby, and I'm coming from Ireland. It's just quarter past six in the evening, and it's lovely to connect with everybody again. And uh, yes, I'm uh, basically a member of NAR, but I'm a CIPS. But in Ireland, I'm a member of the Institute of Professional Auctioneers and Valuers, um, a Blue Book Valuer, and a member of CEPI. So I am delighted to connect with people around the globe and hopefully build connections. I have a lady that just bought a home here uh, from Philadelphia this week and moved in. So if you have somebody that maybe wants to move to Ireland, 
get in touch with me and I'd be delighted to help in any way I can. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much, Bernadette. Uh, mm -hmm. I just got a text message here. This is, apology, I will be, have to step away for this. Could you please drop links into the chat for connecting? Okay, so they are asking me to get a link. Uh, it's too late for me. I think it's gonna interfere with this conversation. And uh, let me see if I can uh, find, just want to make sure the lawyer get his connections. So, and then he joins. I think this is the link right here. Sorry, but the call is uh, Sean at So I am glad that I was able to do it. I found the link, so I somebody requested. So here's the link for the, anybody want to share and join, please uh, do that. Okay, so Sean will be joining us soon. Uh, and uh, and uh, please do share your email, phone number, and cell number is very, very important that we know. So I think we still have a, a, a few minutes. So anyone has, any project information or anything you want to share about your before the lawyer join us at 1 30 we have 10 minutes anyone you want to present anything to our uh, our group please let me know you can raise your hand just uh, and join it before i begin the uh, presentation please open your mic and, and tell me if anybody want to present anything Roger Minkoff and the Virgin Islands. Okay. Yes, go ahead, Roger. Thank you. A um, couple of things. I'm primarily a buyer's agent. Uh, we have 140 realtors on the island of St. Thomas alone. So I let everybody else bat heads and uh, brought ABR to the islands many years ago. We have uh, iconic properties here very well priced compared to the United States. We have uh, spectacular beaches and we're open for business. We also have, for those who may have corporations or individuals who are interested in some of the best tax benefits, not just property taxes, but economic development business taxes, uh, in certain areas, uh, particularly IT, uh, consulting, architecture, and so forth. And I have another company uh, called EDC, Economic Development Commission, that Economic Development Commission a Consulting Group, and I can help people with that. I have a team. Uh, also, uh, we have attorneys and builders and architects that know the Virgin Islands and can build environmentally sound. There's one beautiful property at the end of Peterborg Point, which is the end of Megan's Bay Beach, one of the 10 most beautiful beaches in the world. Five acre property, for example, where the structure is $2.7 million, but it's owned by a not-for-profit. So somebody who is looking for a million dollar tax write-off might be able to buy it for a million seven, and make a donation and end up with an iconic property. One of the other big businesses here are weddings and corporate events. We've hosted presidents and uh, top movie stars and the who is who. So anybody who is interested in a villa, there are just a couple of villas that meet that specification. I have one that's closing next month and uh, that's a big business, as is Airbnb and VRBO. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that Barbara just joined us. Barbara, did you just join us? Please open the mic. Yes, I'm here. Yes, My name is Barbara go. Ashley Jones. And I am, could you hear me? 
Yes, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, Barbara Ashley Jones, Orlando, Florida. I, um, I'm with Premier Sotheby's International. I'm on the, um, have, my, have my CIPS for, I guess, since 2003 or four, somewhere around there. I've been traveling to Realtors Quest for several years. So, uh, so I, I just love my CIPS um, partners and I work a lot with the Canadians. I service the um, residential and some commercial and I'm just happy to be part of this. Wonderful, thank you very much and welcome. Code thank you. Uh, I think there's another, uh, our uh, friend who will join Code Go. Could you please? Yeah. Yes, this is Kojo from Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm, uh, I've been CSPS for five years now. As, uh, as, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you turn your video on, please? Oh, turn on the Zoom. Yeah, so I have been uh, serving a residential business in the Triangle area. Past chair of my international committee, so here to help. Fantastic. So uh, anyone else has uh, anything new? Go mm -hmm. ahead, Shepard. Uh, open your mic, please. Hey, Tahir, your uh, microphone's kind of losing volume. Is microphone is not working? Your, your, yours. Really? It's gotten quiet. Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Okay. Can I say something? Yes, please. Um, I wanted to let you know that I do speak five languages. So in, in English, French, Italian, Spanish, and Farsi. So Fantastic. if you have any of those uh, countries speaking those languages, I would be more than happy to help you. Amazing. That's, Hello? That, that's amazing. Yes. Anybody else want to speak? Because uh, when the lawyer comes, uh, we're going to start his presentation, then I will give you my presentation afterward. Normally I do it in the beginning, but I thought the lawyer can do it and we want to introduce because we have new friends joining us today. So anybody else, please feel free to speak. Um, Crystal, you have anything new? Okay, Andre, just... Uh, Anyone who is not on the screen, please uh, do come and speak. Uh, we've got a few more minutes before we begin uh, the conversation uh, with our lawyer. Gina? Aloha, everyone. I'm Gina Duncan. I'm from Maui, Hawaii. We serve Oahu and Maui. Uh, proud CIPS now for about 10 years. Uh, I was introduced to CIPS through ARIA and um, member of FIOPC, and uh, we, we are the gateway to Asia in Hawaii here. So I uh, like to work with our um, clientele from that side of the world. And also Canadians really love Maui. So uh, past president for the Realtors Association of Maui, currently serving on the board for the Hawaii Association of Realtors, and just happy to be here and meeting all of you. Thank you. Wonderful for joining. We really appreciate that. Uh, Karuna? Yes. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Hi, my name is Karuna and I am from Orlando, Florida. So I just uh, did my SIPS course and um, waiting for the certification. So um, very glad to be here. I am in the Global Association also and I love that. And I thought SIPS and Global Association is my way to go now. Fantastic, fantastic. So Tanya, you have anything to say? Yes, um, it was nice to meet Gina from Hawaii. I just wanted to see if she can leave her information, the details, email or phone number, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, registering all the contacts as much as I can. Yeah, so I'd be happy to do that in the chat. I can uh, do that. Yeah, please Thank leave you. in the chat. I'm going to email or post it because this is what I want to do is that I created a global a CIPS global connectivity network. This is where 
those people who are serious to do business with me or our group, they will be joining that one because CIPS in NAR is for everyone. This is something that I want to connect with people who want to do business with me and I would do business with them. So instead of you loading too much information all over the place, this is very private, it's a private, it's nobody can get in except our own people. So you can list your listing, you can talk about your video, you talk about your project, and I'm gonna share some information with you today, what type of information that I need in order for me to educate uh, my buyers. So when I recommend someone coming to you, he or she will be fully aware and educated. And when he or she meets you, she know everything about uh, your location where they want to invest property. So idea is to engage, energize and educate buyers where they are going and what is happening. So I'm gonna share checklist and information with you. And those information that if you all prepare and post on there, so Florida, Orlando, or Ireland, Japan, Korea, wherever, uh, New York, you create that couple of sheets I'm gonna share with you. It, it will be easy for me. I pick up this information when my clients say, I'm going to Florida, New York or, or whatever. I say, here's information, here's my contact information and here's a pro what you are supposed to do. So I'm gonna share with you a moment, uh, our, um, uh, our lawyer joins that, then we will be uh, starting it. If he doesn't show up in a two minutes, three minutes, then I'll start my presentation, then he can join later. So I have a new uh, person join us. Raquel, could you please introduce yourself? I want to make sure all new uh, friends that are joining us, they are introduced. Yes, uh, Raquel Lavender. I am in the Atlanta, Georgia market. Um, Welcome. I don't know what what all you asked to be introduced with, but I am um, I have been a CIPS for the past seventeen years, and yeah. um, so it's um, it's a it's a pleasure to be here and um, glad to meet all of you. So if there's anything I can do to help in my area, I'll be happy to help. I am bilingual with English and Spanish. Wonderful, that's welcome. Uh, I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, I think it's just a matter of minutes. Uh, the lawyer will be joining us. If he doesn't, then I will start my presentation to tell you about what's going on in Toronto area, what step we're doing, what is Realty Coffee Talk, this global connect connector is all about, and how we can convert our this power is in our hand at the CIPS into a, a money-making machine for all of us. So it's just a matter of a few minutes. So Yoshi, you have something happening this morning before this meeting or after this meeting? Uh, I have a lot of things to do. <laughs> I, I don't know. What do you mean by happening? I mean, something about NAR meeting. You are saying you had a meeting today or to, uh, is it uh, this afternoon? Before our oh, meeting? No, no, no. This week is a FIAPC week. Uh -huh. And today, uh, tomorrow we have another one from a 7:30 a.m. and it's it's a free event and uh, it's you know it's contain a lot of information. That if you have time, probably I can share you a link over here. Okay, wonderful. So anyway, uh, we are just about starting. So if he doesn't show up, I'm going to start my presentation to all of you. And I go, the purpose and goal behind this whole, uh, the Global Connectivity Conference. So I'm gonna start mine, and if he joins us, we'll stop it and we'll continue with his presentation. So I'm gonna share my screen with you all. So first of all, I welcome you to Global Connectivity Conference, CIPS only. This is our fourth, fourth conference. So the objective are get to know each other. If we have new friends who are joining us, we get to know each other and building long-term relationship and, and facilitate business collaboration. These are three objective of our conference. The word is in your hand. The power of the word is in your hand. CIPS is a very powerful global network of real estate professional only to NAR members. Our, my goal is to ignite the spirit of connectivity 
and cooperation within CIPS global family. I treat all CIPS as my global family. We are one and we are equally designated, educated. We have a passion and we want to make sure that we succeed. And we, with confidence, we can make a referral to each other because of jurisdiction issue. And we follow the highest professional uh, standard and practice as a CAPS designee. This was the information for April uh, last, uh, because the May figures are not there. If you are a new person, you can see there was a detached home, 41.3% increase from last, last April to this April in, in Toronto GTA area. The semi-detached 23.6% increase in prices, average price. And town home 25.9%. Uh, Condo 19.6%. So here is sale, look at this sale. It went at 2,957 because it was a COVID to 13,663, same April to April. In April, average price was 820 and 21 is 1 million 90 average price in 901 and 416 area. So this give you a chart. Can you imagine that? 362.1% increase in sale from last April to, to, this, to this April. New listing also increased 237%. Active listing 10.5% increase. The average price 33% increase from last year to this year. A list, uh, listing day on the market minus 47. A property day on the market, minus uh, 41.7. So these are the things now, because this is our fourth conference and I want to share with you uh, information that necessary steps to achieve success. Because we have talked about many other things in the past and uh, because the lawyer will be coming whenever he comes, I hope that he's finished with the doctor soon. Let me see who is on there. Admit, admit, admit. So first step for us to create uh, our connectivity or make our relationship too fruitful, we need to create a buyer's checklist. You need to create a one pager for a buyer to get acquainted with the buying process in your jurisdiction. What are the taxes? What is the process? Do you need to sign a buyer representation agreement? law issues, whatever it is, geographic location, population, education, business, employment opportunity, recreation facility, those are one pager that you have to create a checklist. That means when guys, a buyer uh, wants to know what's going on in, uh, in, uh, in your part of the jurisdiction, they have a full idea about it. And when they go to specific, they will personally meet with you. They will go very specific. So that, that I like to request all of you. I think in my last video presentation, I have a complete checklist and video. You can watch last episode that we did. It has a complete list and all the information. So this is very important because I'm making life easy for you. If I have to make a referral to uh, a buyer going toward your jurisdiction, he or she will be educated before they get off and get off the plane and come to you. This is very important. So we create one pager. Second step is to share data sheet about specific information if it's on MLS or any large size dimension, square footage, up, bedroom, bathroom, annual property taxes, pool, if any. Information about your property, we normally use an MLS system. Uh, same information, if you create one sheet for one specific property, it will be helpful because one buyer, one particular product or uh, a real estate, he or she is gonna buy. So we need to share when, so one checklist for the buyer, then specific to that, uh, the property that you have a data, sharing a data sheet. So. Buyer list will already remain the same unless there is some regulation change or law changes or tax issue, IRS or whatever other applications are. But the data sheet changes is very specific to the property. Third one is the important thing is closing cost. We need to find out the closing process 
uh, what type of land transfer fees are there lawyer fees are there other legal legality to complete a transfer of ownership uh, there are different terms used we have in canada lawyer will do the transaction no realtor can close a transaction between two buyer and seller it has to be a lawyer so if we know at uh, the cost of a residential properties in Ontario, for example, is approximately 2% of the purchase price is closing costs, which include hefty land transfer tax. So 2% of the price, purchase price is land transfer tax. So we, we, we make sure that that information is passed on to, to the buyer who's coming to Toronto. And similarly, if you buy in Toronto, Toronto has a double tax. They have a provincial tax, land transfer tax, they also have a municipal tax for the city because normal annual property taxes are much less as compared to other. So they charge a double transfer tax. They are the only jurisdiction in Ontario that charge double land transfer tax. The other number four is consent. If we are advertising your property, for example, in Canada, not on MLS, but on, on advertisement, we need the consent because we are regulated in the province of Ontario under Real Estate Business Broker Act, which is regulated by Real Estate Council of Ontario. That's a regulatory bar, body that do the education, registration, compl uh, compliance, and consumer protection law. So they, they do all these uh, businesses regulated in Ontario on behalf of the Ministry of Government and Consumer Affairs. So it's very, very disciplined, very, very regulated, and nobody can cheat or misrepresent or false their disciplinary action taken by Real Estate Council of Ontario. Anybody wants to learn about uh, Real Estate Council, you can go to reco.o.ca and you can see the process. They also give guidelines for the home buyer, buying and selling, uh, different uh, uh, videos and conferences they have. So very good system we have for consumer protection uh, department. Now, also I'm exploring the possibility if someone, let's say in Florida or, or in New York or Ireland, they want to list a property on MLS system. Myself, I'm a broker of record and owner of City Pro Realty uh, Brokerage. We have two MLS system. One is a TREB MLS system, Toronto Regional Real Estate Board MLS system. One is called ITSO. Uh, uh, this is the Information Technology System, Ontario. I am a member of Education uh, uh, Technology Committee of ITSO MLS system. I also am a member of uh, Arbitration Committee of ITSO and a board director of Misagros, the board and chair of education committee. My passion is always education, connecting people and sharing knowledge and experience. So I do not know at this moment whether if let's assume you have a property and there's someone that I will be able to advertise on MLS with the proper consent and, and referral agreement to make sure that you get uh, benefit of that. Uh, Toronto Real Estate Board is doing something for foreign. Sean is joining us so soon. So I'm going to finish this one here and then I'll come back to you. Uh, Sean is here. Uh, so uh, referral agreement. So uh, once I know this is possible, I'll be sharing with you. The other one is the referral agreement for fees. Each one of us has to enter into agreement or purchase uh, a referral agreement. My brokerage give 35% uh, commission I earned after successful transaction Canadian dollars to your brokerage. In Canada, in Ontario, you cannot give a, a compensation directly to the realtor. It has to go to the brokerage. I'm sure it will be the same thing in, in your jurisdiction. Number seven step is jurisdiction. I can promote your listing or subdivision, but I cannot sell them here. So that means your name will be included in the presentation. I am recommending it because for example, United States, uh, they are regulated, they are consumer protection laws. So I am feel free to recommend and, and promote you. You will be delivering the service. I am only facilitating a referral program for you. So this is why it's very important for, for us to have a concept. I cannot advertise anybody's listing, anybody's project, unless they give me a consent to advertise. Uh, in, in Canada, it has to be exclusive basis. So 
if you want me to promote your listing, these are steps I will be sharing, uh, posted on my global connectivity network. And I want you to, uh, uh, to uh, see those and I will share this video with you and, and stuff. So I'm gonna stop this, my conversation right here. And it's because Sean is back. So uh, we're gonna come back to this uh, final conclusion. Sean, uh, welcome. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing a bit better. Thanks for asking. I have to get back into the routine today. Okay. So how are you feeling today? Feeling a bit better. I got um, got the vaccine, everybody. So it took me out for a few days, but feeling better now. Happy to be back in the office. Uh, thank you for having me on here. Uh, if uh, I, Go ahead, Mr. Qureshi. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, my friends, uh, the Sean F. F. Khan is uh, a brilliant lawyer in uh, Toronto. Uh, Mississauga, Mississauga, Toronto are the close city. And uh, I'm going to share his video. And uh, you are uh, uh, attending, uh, presenting to our CIPS global family. They are all over the world. And, and they are highly educated and professional. They speak multiple language every part of the world yeah. we have a CIPS. I believe, uh, Shoshi, there are about 3,600, 3,800 CIPS now? Uh, yes. In, in, in globally, all over? In, in globally, uh, internationally, like 800 people. Okay. Yep. okay. And domestically, about 3,000 people and over 55 countries or so. Wow, fantastic. So, uh, uh, Sean, I'm going to uh, pull your uh, the presentation, okay? And and then you can uh, start the conversation, introduce yourself. Sounds good. Um, while Mr. Qureshi is working on that, if you guys can all hear me. Uh, good afternoon. It, it's nice to be here. I, I don't think I've been invited on this show before, so, yeah, so go ahead and uh, on here. Yeah, go, go ahead. Um, a little bit about myself. So, my name's Sean, Sean Khan. Uh, and I'm the founder of SFK Law. It is a boutique law practice that my brother and I run in the heart of Mississauga. Uh, Mississauga is a big city near uh, Toronto, for those of you that are familiar with Canada. Uh, and our firm mainly focuses on real estate law. So that would be residential, commercial, uh, business law. So your corporate and commercial law as well, uh, and as well as litigation. So, uh, yeah, so we do work out of Mississauga and we work closely with uh, City Pro Realty. We cater to all of their clients, whether it's uh, legally or they just need to uh, get some advice on the phone. Um, but before I begin the little presentation we put together uh, for foreign investment, I would just like to tell everybody uh, it's confidential. It is privileged information, what we disclosed here. Um, but at the end of the day, it, the intention is not to give or create a attorney client relationship today between as much as I'd like for you all to be my clients. It's uh, this would not uh, create a attorney client relationship for the time being. If anybody has any questions afterwards, they're welcome to email myself or get in touch with Mr. Qureshi. And then we could, uh, uh, you know, go on the get on the phone or you can drop me a quick email. So introduction slide, we've discussed really the whole point of the conversation today briefly would be about foreign investors, um, what the market is like for them from the real estate side of things, as well as uh, the mortgages side of things, City Pro would help you out more with the real estate sort of thing. My job today is just to give you a little bit of overview about some roles of a lawyer, essentially what we do uh, to the start of the transaction to the end. Canada is known for real estate. Everybody knows whether they live in Canada or they live outside of Canada, if they have family or ties or business connections here. It is one of the biggest factors of our economy. Um, my guess is that it's always going to stay this way. We're we're very dependent on housing as well as foreign investment. But unfortunately, uh, recently, there have been taxes that have been imposed. So before I get into that and sort of discuss a little bit about not, not essentially buy or be aware, but more, more so that as a foreign investor or potential foreign investor, if you have clients or if you know people, what sort of the basic things you should know uh, without getting into too much uh, nitty pitty and details. But first and foremost, I don't know how, how, how well people know what a real estate lawyer does in a transaction. If those that are based in the States, uh, it's, not, it's, it's, it's similar in a way how we deal as the escrow agents, as they call it there, and what we do to get free, clear, and marketable title. So uh, if anyone has questions, feel free to uh, jump in, interrupt. There's just, it doesn't have to be all proper where you wait till I conclude. But um, ideally, what I'm doing now is I'm going to tell you a little bit about the role of a lawyer. And, and excuse me, I've got a little bit of a asthmatic cough as well. So 
my apologies if that annoys anybody. Um, anyway, so free and clear marketable title. What does that mean? Essentially, as a lawyer, your job is and when you hire us as your lawyer, whether it's the re referral of a real estate agent or the client knows as well, we want to make sure the title that the title to the property that you get is free, clear, marketable, not only for yourself, which is the most important individual in this case, whether it's your corporation you're buying through or as an individual, uh, but even the lender. So if you're getting a mortgage or there's security being placed, it is the biggest and most important thing. So what could prevent a, a title? from being free and clear would be a mortgage, for example, could be restrictive covenants. You can't do X, Y, Z on a property. It could be easements that somebody has a right of way across this land that you're buying, whether it's a residential land, if it's a vacant land, as well as a commercial land. So that's number one. Our job is to search the root of the title uh, and make sure you are getting what you signed up for. Um, and ideally that there are no surprises at the end of the day. So there's a lot of liability with that. Um, and it is one of the most important things that only a lawyer could do that in Ontario. You do have uh, conveyancers that can search the root of the title, but it's our uh, opinion. And that's what's called the lawyer's opinion on title. Uh, prepare and complete the transaction. What does that mean? That's basically um, that's basically we are the start of it as well as the end of it. And I was on Mr. Qureshi's uh, coffee talk not too long ago, a couple months ago. It's called Realty Coffee. And we had a discussion about this, the preparing and completion of a real estate transaction. As lawyers, we usually get things at the end of the, at the, end of the show. So uh, you have your um, real estate agent, mortgage broker, property inspector, fire insurance people, everybody. Then you get the lawyer involved who has the deal. So a lot of the times it is difficult for us to negotiate or put in offers or conditions. Uh, well, as part of the offer, put in conditions as part of the uh, property purchasing, whether it's a real estate, residential or commercial, but for mo mainly for commercial, we'll touch upon this in a second or two when I go to the next slide, you'll see that a lot of the real estate agents, the more experienced ones are the ones that want to sort of protect the best interests of the clients, as so all of them should, but I should just rephrase that. Uh, they are usually ones that get, you know, sometimes the lawyer involved prior to even putting an offer and see what sort of due diligence that lawyer could do, uh, see so if they can search the title, make off title search issues. Uh, that could be whether it's hydro, whether it's tax uh, regarding, whether it's zoning. That's the big one. A lot of the times uh, an investor, whether it's a foreign investor or even a local investor, uh, would like to see, can I use this uh, property for this specific purpose? So one of the ones that comes to mind recently is in uh, vacant land that was supposed to be bought out by prospective purchasers. But their idea was to put a, um, a religious site on there as in a place of worship. Uh, and they had a lot of zoning issues. So you need to make sure that, and we don't do all the zoning uh, checks on our own. We do get uh, a lot of other parties that get involved with that. Um, and, and the more you look into it, the more you'll realize that not only do you have, you know, the, the real estate agent, the mortgage broker, uh, the home inspector, or property inspector, you do have other people playing a part in this at times. If it involves construction, for example, on property or vacant land, you'll have the surveyors coming in. Uh, you'll have engineers even coming in and architects coming in. Uh, and then obviously we do act on behalf of the lender a lot of the times. The lender being, most cases, is the bank. Sometimes you have private mortgages involved. That could be a company. It could even be an individual lending money, depending on what sort of stake that you're speaking of. If it's a bigger investment, it's more expensive property. If it's just residential, if it's commercial. Uh, and sometimes you have lenders and commercial transactions. They say, you know what, we'll give you the financing, but we want our own lawyer backed on it. So a lot of times as a purchaser, you sometimes end up paying two legal fees. You end up paying fees for your own lawyer because you like the lawyer or for whatever reason, you're confident, you trust in that competent individual. Uh, and you end up paying the bank's legal fees as well. Sometimes the bank just says, hey, listen, it'll be easier if our lawyer does the whole transaction. This is more so sometimes you see more often than not in commercial transactions, not as much in residential real estate transactions. Uh, but uh, so we do act for uh, the individual that's providing the security or that's uh, providing the financing. And for our job, it's to make sure their security is good to go. What kind of issues do we see in that? A lot of conflict of interest issues. So technically because the lender would be our client too, as well as the purchaser. Um, so what would happen is we need to get certain forms signed, letting the prospective purchaser at this point, they would be a purchaser in this case uh, that let them know that, listen, we also act for the lender. Uh, and then should there be a conflict ever, whatever nature we have to disclose to both sides. So we do act for both sides in that case. Uh, the other thing that's pretty important, something that gets, you know, put, brushed under the, under the rug is to make sure all conditions are met on the agreement. Whether it's your residential, they're a little bit more straightforward than your commercial uh, agreement. So for those of you who don't know how familiar you would be with the agreement of purchase and sale in Ontario, we use the standard warrior form as our agreement. And a lot of the times the conditions are there uh, included in the agreement to set standard form. But then uh, sometimes the agents will add their own, uh, whether it's conditions uh, of the agreement or, you know, they 
to decide to do it, go a step a little further than they would in the normal case. So financing could be a condition, this offer is conditioned on the purchaser obtaining sufficient financing within five business days of signing of the offer. Inspection is also another one we see. So that's something that we have to make sure as a lawyer uh, that all conditions are done because if the conditions haven't been fulfilled and there's a way for an exit clause for either party, then you don't have a firm deal. So it's all about making sure you have a binding agreement uh, and consideration is being exchanged. Due diligence, so that's the one that I sort of brushed off upon as well. It's essentially what we're here for. Um, and people like lawyers because we are diligent, so we do our due diligence, or we're supposed to, I should say, uh, to make sure that our clients are getting what they want to get. Now, this is the part that I have personally in practice as well seen a little bit of issues with because sometimes you need to make sure all parties are on the same page, which is super important that your real estate agent, your mortgage broker, you're dealing with people that you know, probably work with the lawyer before, or they know how the individual is in terms of their professionalism and their legal expertise in these areas, because you want to make sure I've had nightmare situations where last minute things are being disclosed to me as the real estate lawyer on a transaction, and we're two days away from closing, or maybe even the day of closing. And these are things that should have been uh, brought up by the real estate agent, for example, or the mortgage broker should have told these things. So we need to make sure that, because there's so many parties involved in this transaction, you have to make sure everybody falls in line. That's why it's a team, uh, it's a team effort. You know, everybody has their own interests and our, all of our interests is to protect our client's interests, whether it's mortgage broker, real estate agent, et cetera, and so on, or the lawyer, but they all fall, fall in line essentially. Um, so you have to make sure the due diligence is done accordingly as well. If anybody has questions about this slide or anything about the role of the lawyer, I'll take them now. If not, we can move on to the next slide real quick. Yes, if you have any question, please feel free to ask. <coughs> okay, so we should move to the next slide. Fantastic, we'll move on. So now uh, we're talking a little bit more sort of relevance to what we were, uh, well, the topic today would be at least on my end, um, and that's gonna be as a foreign investor. Some basic things to look out for. A uh, few of you could be looking at this saying, oh, I already know this, nothing new. Well, it's okay, I'll just tell you again. Uh, and some of you could say, oh, I didn't know that. And hopefully that, is, that could be the case with some people, but nonetheless, um, number one is non-resident speculation tax. So this tax has been imposed. It's, it's, a, it's a relatively newer tax that's been imposed. Uh, and essentially they, this is applicable towards residential properties only in the greater Golden Horseshoe region of Ontario. If somebody was to question me right now, say, hey, Sean, I'm going to put you on the spot. What cities fall under the great, greater Golden Horseshoe region? I'm going to tell you I'm not good at geography. So uh, go ahead and Google that. But I can tell you it's the main regions in uh, Ontario, or better yet, ask your real estate agent. They're the experts with that stuff. But nonetheless, for the legal side of things and sort of the tax side of things, is if you're a foreign, uh, if you're non-resident, what's a non-resident? Somebody who's not a, uh, in this case, Canadian citizen or a PR. Uh, nor do you have uh, connections with a spouse, for example, that could be a Canadian citizen or a PR, which in that case, if you're legally married or under the definition of the Family Law Act, Section 29, you are a spouse with them, you would be exempt, essentially. And we'll discuss that in a second. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but 15% tax is imposed at these properties. For example, if you want to do quick math, a uh, million dollar property you're trying to purchase, now you have to pay 15% tax on it. Now, there are ways of getting a rebate. Maybe when you qualify, you can get the money back, but there are timelines, there are deadlines uh, and applicability criteria that you need to uh, qualify under in order to get the rebate back. But for this purposes, non-resident speculation tax is important. I will discuss later on uh, or in the coming slides where that is relevant, where it isn't, because one of the things I've realized mostly, especially dealing with my network and people I speak to, is there's a little bit of misconfusion regarding uh, this tax, essentially, because some people are thinking it's a blanket, all residential tax um, across Ontario. Well, no, there's specific areas, number one, and it's very specific to residential. But then somebody would say, well, what if I have a residential property, Sean, that has seven units, uh, separate units, and not six or five or, four or three? As an investor, maybe you, you, know, you have bigger pockets and you want to sort of invest in a reason. You don't want to get a residential and rent it out to the seat tenants. You want to get a, a duplex or a bigger rental buildings. What happens then? We'll discuss that shortly. Uh, disclosure to Canadian government. So that's basically essentially you have to, uh, you're legally required to disclose your intentions for the purchase um, of the property, whatever you're buying, whether it's vacant land, commercial land, residential, et cetera, and your residency status. The government needs to know who's buying it for what reasons and as such when it's time to dispose of the property there will be taxes that have to be paid accordingly. Uh, the big one is 
capital gains. If you'd want to know more about uh, capital gains, you have to reach out to your accountants. Um, and but that's just something that I'm going to let you know that in the event that it is a uh, investment property, gains would be payable upon disposition. Now the strategies around that, what you can do to defer and whatnot, I'm going to leave that to your accountants. Land transfer tax. This could be a foreign concept. This could be somebody that if you're familiar to it or not, but you do have to pay uh, land transfer tax in Ontario when you purchase uh, a property. Now, there are ways of getting rebates, but again, unfortunately, in order to get a rebate, you cannot be a uh, foreign uh, or a non-resident, but in case your spouse is, for example, you're waiting to come over, you've married somebody who's a Canadian citizen or PR, there's ways that you would be exempt. And in the event that you're not exempt, you could always qualify for a rebate. Um, okay, so moving on, unless somebody has any questions about those basic sort of okay. topics, I've got... Um, uh, shot, yeah. shot. Sean, may I add something to this? Of course you can, yes. Sir. Okay, so number one, non-residents. Uh, speculation tax is, uh, it was implemented under Ontario Fair Housing Plan in April 2017. Because affordability was an issue, a lot of foreigners were buying it. It was getting out of the reach of Ontario citizens, so Ontario government implemented that. And there is a rebate program. I think uh, Sean will explain that. Uh, number two, in terms of residential tenancy, uh, you have to be out of the country, whether Canadian citizen or foreign, for six months, and you fall into non-residence category. A land transfer tax uh, for uh, GTA in Toronto, there is a city land transfer tax on top of the Ontario land transfer tax. That means if you buy property in Toronto, you will be paying double the land transfer tax. One is Ontario land transfer tax. The other one is city uh, tra uh, uh, land transfer tax. So then uh, disposition of taxes, I think is a good advice. Talk to a chartered accountant. We can help you on that. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Fantastic. Thank you for adding in what you did. That is really helpful. Go ahead. Okay, great. So um, if nobody has any other questions, then essentially you've got another sort of areas to deal with in terms of exemptions and solutions. So a lot of people could say, well, we don't want to pay the additional 15%. If you look at the basis behind this, uh, tax has been to deter sort of uh, a lot of foreign investors purchasing property because I don't know how familiar some of you may be with the Canadian housing market, but the average Canadian, um, I should just rephrase this, and, and especially the way I do say it is the local Canadian citizens and the individuals that are sort of not foreign investors, they're not very happy with the situation because homes are so expensive. Um, people have to work really hard, I should say, uh, to be able to purchase a property. And that's the case anywhere around the world. But more so now, if you look at the average income that a Canadian's making, uh, and I should rephrase this even more so with the Ontario, the British Columbia uh, markets, average income compared to average uh, property price, obviously your realtors are the experts with these sort of discussions, but just sort of free thinking here, uh, it is quite, uh, you know, it's not even, it's not fair in that sense. So the housing market is quite expensive. So one of the solutions the government decided to do was to impose this tax to sort of say, hey, listen, if, if a foreign investor is buying, they're going to pay X, Y, Z tax and so on. Um, my opinion, this is not legal opinion. This is just me as in, I don't know, making a joke out of it in a way is this is what I say. Those that are going to be investing in Canada that have the pockets to do so, you really think another 15% is going to deter them from doing so, especially if they're not purchasing through a corporation or even if they are purchasing through a corporation or, you know, they, their intention is to get uh, some sort of immigration status later down in Canada, they'll pay whatever, it, uh, whatever they got to pay. So that, in my opinion, it's got to be a little bit more. Uh, and obviously it's not a legal opinion. This is my non-legal opinion, I should say. It, they need to get something, some, some better thing. And that's why I believe maybe now or April or April already passed, we're in June now. Um, the Liberal government was sitting about taxing vacant homes. I don't know what's going on with that um, bill, I suppose. What's the, maybe Mr. Qureshi might touch up on it later on, but that is something that was being discussed to further make housing affordable. Uh, anyways, uh, I'll, I'll continue here. So non-resident speculation tax, a pickle in the golden, uh, greater golden horseshoe area region of Ontario. Now, this is an interesting point I, would, I wish to discuss. I'll take a couple minutes here and talk about it. It's only applicable to residential properties uh, yes. and residential properties that are at least one and not more than six family uh, dwelling uh, units, essentially. So duplexes, rental apartments are the ones that are exempt from it. 
Uh, and you would think other, uh, other than a foreign investor that's coming in in the situation where they would just like one property uh, and then rent it out or purchase it as their vacation home or whatever, they would have to pay. They're not exempt unless obviously they fall under the exemption of having a spouse, being a uh, person under the nominee uh, protected refugee class and so on and so forth. However, you would think a lot of the bigger investors, the ones that uh, you know have the influence in the market, they're probably going to come to get rental apartments, get 10, 15, 20 units or so, rent out the full building, or more so even get agricultural land, uh, industrial or commercial land, uh, in which case, guess what? It's not subject to this tax again. And there, I'm not saying it's not subject to any taxes, but just this NRST tax. The other taxes, the additional uh, you know, disposition tax or whatever else would be implemented is something that exists, obviously just like anywhere in the world uh, or most places. Um, but this specific ta tax is to deter does not apply in this case. So if those of you are interested or your clients are interested in certain uh, sort of investments, they can breathe easy because guess what? This is not going to be something that will uh, deter you. Obviously, there are other things that need to be discussed when depending on the size of the project, the size of the investment. Um, and mainly, obviously, a lot of times we see when we dealt with some foreign investors as well is uh, they want to invest in big projects, bigger projects that take a lot of time that require a lot of financing and that require a lot of due diligence. So you see things falling apart on the very last stages when you have a team of lawyers involved. You got a lot of money that you pumped out for disbursements, for search costs, for reading the title, for making sure the property is zoned, for making sure the right permits can be applied and at the very last second, people pulled the plug. And guess what? It is not a firm deal right now. This is uh, conditional upon these things that you need to satisfy, especially for the foreign uh, investors, because they don't know much about the land here. So they're relying on us as the lawyer, as the legal, as the real estate team, as, you know, as everybody else that's part of it. So that's something to sort of remember a little bit as well, that depending on what your client wants, you guys would know that a lot better as well. It, it's obviously very subjective to each, each situation. The other exemptions are, and this is for more so for your, um, you know, not the company clients, not the corporations, for individuals that are coming into Canada for immigration purposes that have a claim for refugee status or that are nominee under the protected uh, class, they would be exempt from it. Uh, and there are also exemptions of ways, and these are the things that we would tell our clients how to get the rebates. Um, so there are ways of getting rebates and there's timelines, there's ways of doing that. So that is possible as well. It is time barred though. You do have a limitation with that. Um, so obviously it's not like you can do it 10 years down the road or whatnot. Spousal status is another uh, big one. I see that one uh, quite a lot where you would have one spouse that is a citizen of Canada or a refugee class or a PR, a permanent resident, and their spouse is now moving over to Canada uh, and they're purchasing a property together. Uh, will the spouse have to pay the tax? No, they would not have to pay because they are, well, as long as you swore a statement to mine, because I actually, um, I think it was land uh, minister of finances office, uh, something along those lines. We actually ended up calling them not too long ago uh, and asking them what records do we need to keep on our file as a lawyer? Because in case it gets audited, what do we need to prove to you? Because we are the ones, sorry, this is another thing that should have been mentioned in terms of uh, the role of the lawyer and uh, Essentially, what we need to do is we claim the rebates for you. We claim the exemptions. We're the ones that are telling the government. We're the tel telling the relevant departments that so-and-so is a non-resident, so-and-so isn't. And they're relying on our statements. So we need to make sure we have the relevant authority to make those statements and to be able to back that up. A lot of times it is sworn statements. So an affidavit, uh, a declaration that I am married to so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so is a Canadian citizen and a PR. How do I find out if somebody's a PR or citizen? Well, show me proof, obviously, with your passport or your PR card. That's one way of doing it. The other way is a marriage certificate. You need to show us a marriage certificate. Are you actually married? Uh, and then the law is pretty interesting, actually, over in Ontario. And on the Family Law Act, Section 29, um, there's, you don't have to be legally married to somebody to uh, get the exemption under the spousal exemption for non-resident speculation tax. If you're cohabitating uh, under the same address, at least for a couple of years time, you would fall under common law partners and that would be exempt or if you have a child with somebody. So that's more so for your clients. Let's say if you have people that are, you know, they have family, a couple and so on and uh, not the companies, not the corporations. Those, those are the ones that we have the, you know, commercial. And I'm not saying the other parties will not invest in the commercials or the or the big plazas and whatnot, but just more on a day-to-day -day basis. What we see, I'm commenting that from that point of view. Um, 
Moving onwards, the other thing would be financing options. Obviously, you have access to loans uh, that you could get from Canadian banks, in some instances, uh, foreign banks. Why is the financing important? Because a lot of times foreign buyers would say, and we can get Mr. Qureshi's opinion on this too, or anybody else who'd like to discuss, uh, sometimes they do have enough funds to buy things in, uh, in cash, as we say, as a paid off, essentially, and not worry about the security and the financing and the additional work. But Honestly, the type of deals that we worked on, especially with the commercial investors, there is financing involved to an extent, um, and the banks have their requirements and their bigger amounts to deal with. So as you could imagine, the, the more the amount that's being borrowed, uh, the more scrutiny there is involved, and they require the lawyers to do a lot more diligence and work. And that's why you need to work in, uh, or you have to let your clients know that when we do, when, if they're considering of investing in Canada, they need to have a full team. It's not a matter of, oh, I have a real estate agent or uh, I have a connection with an immigration consultant or, you know, I'm in it with a brokerage or whatever the case might be. Okay, that's the first step. But who is going to be quarterbacking this thing? And the answer is nobody quarterbacks. And now that's the football reference. I don't know how familiar people are with football here. This is a team game, essentially. And it, basically, everybody has the same job to do. They just have to quarterback it in their own way, I should say. So there's no one person that's going to lead it. You can't just be like, oh, I've got a lawyer. He's fantastic. He'll run the show. No, it's not going to work like that because of the fact that this is a first, uh, it's a foreign investor. It's not somebody that's local. That doesn't know the norms of the place. Doesn't know the way life works in these areas of the world, especially with the little disclosures or the hidden, uh, you know, things that the average person would not be aware of, at least. So that's why you need to make sure you have a team. And it's funny that I was discussing that. I didn't even look at the last point, but that's essentially what that means strong uh, legal team and uh, real estate representatives, as well as any other people that would be a part of it. So it is ideally a, um, it's, it's, a, it's a team work that needs to be done here. But more importantly, our clients, your clients, prospective clients, they got to be comfortable with the whole dynamic and make sure the person can carry that on. And uh, I'll just conclude with this. A lot of times you get involved in things, right? So as lawyers, we do like to take retainers out, especially with foreign investors, because we end up spending money out of our own pockets to do certain searches, to do certain compliance, uh, and the transaction does not go through. It doesn't materialize. It. So uh, that is something that we need to take uh, care of and make sure everyone's protected in that case too. Uh, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, sorry, I did join in a little later today as well. I had an appointment and I do have to head out soon, uh, but I'm open to any questions, feedback, comments, if somebody wants to discuss the topic. Mr. Qureshi, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. I just want to add uh, a couple of things here. First of all, I think uh, regarding the rebate under Ontario Fair Housing Plan, and there is a time bar, as Sean has mentioned there, that option is available if someone bought a property and they are in the process of getting immigration status in, uh, in Ontario, they can they have to watch for the time bar, a rebate is available. Number two, there is a land transfer tax rebate for the first time buyer. Uh, and uh, that's $4,000 for buying a, pro a single residential property in Ontario. And if you are buying in Toronto, there is a double tax, therefore you get a double uh, rebate. Question I have for Sean, you is that rebate for first time home buyer, would that apply to a foreign investor or not? So, no, it's, that's a really good question. First time home buyer rebate, it's not gonna apply to a foreign if they're not a Canadian resident or a citizen. So it doesn't apply to non-residents. That's a really good question. Uh, and if you look at the statements that we make, and sometimes this is a problematic, you cannot have owned a piece of property that is your primary home or uh, of a home anywhere in the world. It's not just Canada. You know, you have a lot of times people say, oh, I own the home. So no, but you can never have owned a property. That's number one. And to answer your question, uh, no, as a non-resident, as a foreign buyer, you're not gonna get that rebate back unless you fall in one of the exemptions where you are waiting to get that status in for your permanent residency or your spouse and so on. But then even then you would pay it up front and then claim the rebate back. Uh, so yes, for sure. What, wonderful. Number, uh, another important thing that I want to make sure in my last presentation on our, uh, our global connectivity conference uh, in May, uh, I have very comprehensive presentation and process for buying property. And that one give you a lot more detail. If you want to watch that, uh, that you will be able to uh, to get more acquainted with the process that we're taking. 
Yes, banks are financing in Ontario. They expect you to have a 35% down payment. The balance is financed, subject to verification of income and all that stuff. It's very, very important for you to know that. And number two is regarding when disposition of the property, you are required as a foreign non or non-resident, you are required to get certificate of clearance from uh, Ministry of Finance. And I think the lawyer are supposed to hold about 30% of the sale price in trust until that certificate is issued. Can you tell us, Sean, a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's called the it's called the clawback. And uh, Mr. Qureshi is absolutely right. We have to claw back funds until we get a clearance certificate. Now, the advice that I always give in this is to make sure you let the lawyers know in advance, make sure, and this is, it goes back to what we're discussing with everybody being a team and working together. Uh, because in the event, one individual is not aware of the individual's particular solution, it takes weeks to get the clearance certificate. So your client is not gonna be very happy with the clawback or, uh, because it's a lot of money that we're speaking about or discussing. And I've had, I've spoken to a lot of individuals as networking, discussing about matters to refer business and so on. And they go, we I mean, have had one, one or two nightmare scenarios where it was disclosed uh, at, at a very late, late time. Uh, and it made things very difficult for everybody involved. So uh, I hope, hope that uh, you have liked it. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to connect with me. Sean is a, a, a brilliant lawyer. He helped on my, our projects, uh, many, many transactions that he has done for us. We use him. And I'm going to go back to my presentation on the last uh, May presentation. I really gave a complete buying process information. If you can go to uh, even uh, CIPS NAR site, you will see the upload of my video. It has a lot more detailed information that I share with you. And I'm going to go back to my presentation and complete that. So uh, then we will open up and we have a conversation. We still have time. So if you allow me, if you have any question for Sean, please post it there. And um, if you have, and it all goes back to the same checklist that I was sharing with you. So uh, Sean, uh, thank you very much for your detailed presentation. We really appreciate that. You were not feeling good uh, and you went to the doctor and you made it finally. I, I push you a little bit <laughs> just to make sure. Absolutely. You had to motivate me a little bit, uh, but it's always a pleasure speaking to new people, whether it's virtually zoom hopefully in a few months time or as soon as possible we could do this in person and things open up i would like to say thank you to mr Qureshi for allowing me to be here today and speaking to all the wonderful people even though i could see only a few people on my screen if anybody has any questions you could uh, shoot me an email so it would be sean that's my first name s-h-a-u-n at sfklaw.ca the best way of contacting me is you can get my details from this uh, brilliant man here mr Qureshi, and we can connect uh, at another time Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, have, a, have a wonderful day. Take care, thank, everyone. Thank, thank, thank you very so much. much. Thank you really much. We just give a applause for, for doing this. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So I'm going to share the screen and go back and then uh, the, the finish the presentation. So let's see where we are. Okay. I'm going to close his presentation and open mine. Just going to take it back. We're going to go fast because we already finished quite a few of this. So, so this is a very important sheet that I created. So I'm hoping that uh, that you sh you share this information with uh, with me on our network. So buying process, this is where I mentioned, uh, there were a lot more detail, but I kept this small stuff for you. First of all, for example, selection of a realtor. So when you make a refer, the buyer knows that you have, as a CIP has recommended to me, and, uh, and, and the, the process is that anyone who's buying a property in, in Ontario, is uh, they select uh, realtors. You are free to buy as a private person, but because of complexity involved, you are uh, recommending a, uh, you know, a, your fellow CIPS. So when they select a, a, a realtor, 
search, selection of property and making an offer. I'm just fast tracking it. So this is a process that we search properties and we make the offer. Mortgage financing, appraisal, home inspection, condition, condition are satisfied. Then the firm agreement of purchase and sale is sent to the lawyer, complete transaction. Lender send mortgage funds to a designated lawyer, in this case, Sean. A lawyer will register the deed transfer and mortgage char charge. A majority of the lawyer will require title insurance to cover uh, uh, the risk of fraud against the title. So cost of a, a normal cost of closing cost is about 2% of the purchase price in the province of Ontario, except Toronto. Toronto has a, uh, a land transfer tax will be extra, is the double. All registration is done electronically. So I created a checklist. This is my uh, checklist. I tell you, we need, to, we need to discuss working with a realtor is a brochure where we create an understanding between the buyer who is recommended by you or referred by you. And then buyer position agreement is a document that create a legal binding that he or she become a client. And then who is doing it? This is my checklist for my trade record file. So I am the broker of record and I am the one who is representing the buyer. Then we have individual client identification form. This is a, a form which required FinTrack, Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing Act because we need to find out who this person is who's buying the property, where is bringing the money and all those issues. These are identifying a person. If you have a driving license or if it's a foreign person that we have a passport, make sure there are two government ID. And this is a very comprehensive, uh, sorry, go back. Comprehensive page, it has uh, four pages. MLS system, if we're buying a property from MLS or uh, privately. Then you have a property showing a policy and procedure. This is a COVID form. They have to do declaration. The person who's traveling is free from all potential. As you know, in, 20, uh, in Ontario, you need to be have 14 days, quarantine for 14 days. So therefore, this is not a time to travel. So, and they have to certify to us, they have not traveled, they have never been sick and all that stuff. So there is a form that they have to sign a declaration. Each time if we show a property, we have to do same thing for the listing agent, a listing brokerage. We do one for the buyer brokerage. So agreement of purchase and sale that we negotiate here, right here, and a complete agreement. Then we have, if we do any amendments or if there are any deposit receipt, this is a fin track. Money, this is an institute that monitors the money laundering uh, for any terrorist financing act. So FinTrack is an institution that do that. So we take the receipt. It's a very comprehensive process to, uh, when you receive the funds, they go to trust deposit account. So source of funding, uh, how this money was came is a cash, bank e-transfer or, or ETF or, or bank draft, whatever. So we have information, so listing brokerage is involved, realtor who is representing the listing agent, the mortgage information, if we are securing a mortgage, conditions are waiver or satisfied, home inspection, lawyer's information. In this case, if it's a seller lawyer will be different, buyer lawyer will be different. If deal does not uh, fall apart or did not go through, we have a mutual release. There's a, another uh, process. Deposit refund, one mutual release is signed, deposit is, is uh, returned. Deposit can only be returned, there are three steps. Number one, the transaction is completed and money transferred from trust account to commission trust account. Surplus money to the buyer or seller is sent from the trust account. Commission is given to the cooperating broker or the uh, listing brokerage, depends who is representing it. And then, Commission brokerage, listing brokerage, or buying broker. In case us representing your client, I'm a buyer broker. I collect commission from the listing brokerage. When the commission come in, is documented in trade record sheet. And when I am cooperating with you or you have a client, so I will be processing a 35% of my commission to you because refer came from you. There is a HST applicable 13% HST 
which is transmitted to a, a Canada Revenue Agency on a quarterly basis. So you will not get that uh, the HST. You only get the commission amount that is that is earned. And buyer lawyer information. So the closing date is established in agreement of purchase and sale. Then we give out a statement uh, listing. We are sending invoice to listing agent or a lawyer. If it's a listing agent uh, listed by somebody else, then the invoice goes to the listing brokerage. If it's our listing and we are the seller or the buyer, we send invoice to a lawyer and we also get a completion certificate from them. So this is how we close the file. So this is a little bit about me. Uh, you know, just learn about me, Google me. I'm also a mortgage broker, uh, residential commercial uh, loans, I deal. Uh, I'm a principal broker. My license is M08002130. Normally, I do not do mortgages for those list, uh, the deal that I do, uh, just to avoid a conflict, even though it's very legal because my focus always been in real estate, but my broker license is 13241. You can search that on uh, on uh, any 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 government department, department, uh, my name will be there. So this is where I created a CIPS Global Connectivity Network on Facebook. For those of you who are interested to work with me and make a, a exchange project information, listing and referral, Please, this join my. This is a private group. Only those people, uh, friends, uh, my CIP family who wants to work with me can join it here. It's a private. Nobody else can join. You have to be CIPS working together with us to join it. This is something new I did. A CIPS Global Connectivity WhatsApp group, because I've been reaching out, uh, sending a Zoom invite to individually talk about project and listing. If you join this WhatsApp group on uh, on CIP Global Connectivity, I can pick up the phone, I can WhatsApp you, call you, and we have a video talk about a, a project or a listing or a referral. This is my cell number. You can add it to your um, uh, your uh, network. If you Thank you very much for joining. So this was a small presentation. I hope that it was any useful to you. So I like to I like to get a feedback from you guys. How do you think these, these things are working, and how seriously we are able to do some business together? Uh, please open your uh, mic and feel free to say anything. We have five minutes before we end our program. This is Barbara. I think this was a very very good presentation. Lots of great information. And I'm looking forward to working with many of people that, is, that I see here, um, as well as working with you. It yeah. was great. Thank you. You're welcome. This is the power. I believe the CIPS, they have a power in their hand. We have a non-network globally. And each one of you one, one of uh, mentioned, everyone has a four or five language. I speak six, seven languages also. And uh, most English, Punjabi, Urdu, Persian, some Korean, you know, various languages that I learned through the process. So idea is to connect with people. When I know my friends who are part of my team and group and they can speak languages, this is very important instrument in terms of communication. Communication is the power. And we are creating this platform to connect and use power each other. If I can find someone that who is who need uh, he doesn't understand me, I'll be reaching out to you. It is it, it is how we work together as, as a group, as a you know a family. CIP is a global family. So please feel free to say anything you want to say. Bruce, you want to add anything? Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. And I can feel your passion through the screen with, with regards to our C, CIPS connections. And, and I've already had somebody reach out to me with, um, with an opportunity that they're looking to, 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 to uh, transact. So also feel free to re, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn. Yes. I'd love to kind of you know, connect with everybody. And thank you so much. It was very informative, great presentation, great, yeah. great, uh, great day today.
Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Bruce, uh, you can uh, join me also. I have a, a, almost 9,000 followers on uh, LinkedIn and it's growing like crazy. Uh, almost 100% every week is growing because sharing knowledge is very important. We have t tremendous knowledge in our uh, CIP group. And I, I, I love and respect each one of you because you have earned this, this designation because you are passionate about it. And, and if we work very hard and connect and utilize this knowledge and experience that we have, we make money and we enjoy it. And, and it, it benefits us. It motivates you more when you're making money. I've been very successful in real estate and uh, it is, it's been passionate. I only been uh, real estate for 15 years. But I opened my brokerage after two years. The moment law allow me, I open a brokerage. So I have eight designation. Highest in Canada is, is fellow of the Rural Institute of Canada. And uh, just to, you might have seen the post that uh, they nominated me for uh, I, one of the award. And it's a member of the year choice award, I believe is uh, one of the name of uh, founder J.B. Weber. So, uh, Pray for me and let's see if I can get that because uh, I was nominated uh, in uh, 2018, but somehow I was uh, new to the organization maybe. But at uh, this time, we're gonna make you guys proud because giving back to the society, giving back to our profession and sharing our knowledge experience to helping our fellow uh, members, CIPS, uh, is really uh, admiring to meet so much talented professional with so much power, uh, especially ladies, I, I'm very impressed with you guys, a uh, girl's uh, accomplishment. And I always support everyone. All my uh, network majority uh, are the girls. They are taking over our real estate. You know, 54% in Canada out of 128,000 realtors are girls. And my daughter just passed my final exam. She's also licensed now. I'm hoping that she carry on my legacy. Uh, Hannah Kureshi, she just passed her present exam. She's already licensed, but she was doing an articling uh, period, so she finished that. My wife also joined me uh, as she was making good money and a regular job. I said, nine to five, you're working too long. Uh, get in real estate. So she joined it. Hopefully, down the line, she will go for CIPS later on. But I'm really grateful and honored for all of you uh, to join this conversation every month, uh, first uh, Tuesday, uh, sorry, Wednesday at one o'clock, we do that. Now we have, this is our fourth conference and we need to take those seven steps, six steps that I propose. So we take this to the next level. And, and please feel free to let me know if you want to do a presentation next conference. I love to have you guys present anything you want to do the way I did it. So if you need any guidance, anything from me, please feel free to ask. I'd be more than happy to share with you. And my focus now is I'm putting together these packages for each of my CIPS partner who is going to give me information that I will work on. And as I mentioned to you in Canada, or especially in Ontario, we do not advertise anybody's property on a commercial or social media or anywhere unless there is a consent or agreement. So it is not the taking away because this, my jurisdiction is only Ontario. Therefore, I can promote you, but I cannot do business. It has to come to you. So the, the way I plan it, I'm going to have, if you have a referral, that a, a project that you want me to work on, then I will have your complete information or logo, all information on the same sheet and as my information it will clearly say that you have to connect with my fellow CIP's partner in the jurisdiction. So very transparent. And then I will be working with you to make sure that we are promoting it. I'm working with some, some division, some of the projects with the builders, and there will be a lot more things coming to you. We'll be sharing on our global connectivity network. So unless anyone has anything to say, we are almost out of our time. So please let me know if you want to say anything. All right. So thank you very much for joining Realty Coffee Talk. 
Global Connectivity Conference for CIPS only. Next uh, hour will be on first Wednesday at 1 p.m. In the meantime, number one, please join my LinkedIn, also Global Connectivity Network, only because you want to share your uh, listing or project or refer. Please join that. And if you want to connect with me directly on the phone to avoid Zoom call, you can have WhatsApp video call. You can join that group. So I take this opportunity to thank you very much for joining. I will share. I'm going to save the, the chats. I will share with you this information. So make sure everybody can have this information. The video will be recorded, hopefully, uh, in a couple of hours. It will be on YouTube, and I will share on our network. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining. May God bless you all. May God bless everyone who's uh, watching and, and, and participating. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Thank you, Tahir. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Tahir. Great you, session. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Tahir. Have welcome. a great week. Same to you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. You. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Pleasure meeting you all. I will say I'm a little bit jealous. Everybody who speaks seven different languages, I'm still working on mastering English. <laughs> we all don't we. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye for now.